I'm Matt. Welcome to Tech Test It. When it comes to CPU cooling, is more always better? We say yes! Stay tuned to find out more. Traditionally, on an aftermarket CPU cooler, the most effective way to cool that cooler is to put one fan on your intake and one fan on your exhaust. Some people prefer one fan and pull, some people prefer one fan and push for noise purposes, but for the highest performance, noise aside, this is what you do. The whole point is to get air moving across that CPU cooler as fast as possible. Well, I thought, hey, more fans the better, right? No, actually that's not necessarily true. What I did initially was I took a bunch of fans and I stacked them on my CPU cooler. And I thought, man, six fans, good to go. No, my initial results show that that actually decreases performance. I have more research to do, but as of right now, that's the conclusion we're coming to. But what if you can actually make more fans effective? As a mechanic, I know that in an engine, in the cylinder, the air comes into the cylinder by coming down as the piston comes down, it sucks air into the cylinder. But if you want to get more performance, what do you do? You throw a supercharger or a turbocharger on it to force air into the cylinder as the piston's coming down. That way there's less work being done and you can actually squeeze more air into the cylinder. I intend to apply that same principle with more CPU fans. Because we don't have a computer case, we're gonna have to turn the computer on with a screwdriver. There's no power button available. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> so let's start with the hardware we're using. I'm not going to go through everything because most of it's not that important. Important thing is uh, the CPU we're using, which is an AMD Athlon 2X4 640, overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz, and our CPU cooler is a Corsair H55 liquid cooling system, and we currently have it in our push-pull configuration. This is your standard setup, and obviously we're not in a case environment, so this isn't gonna be actual results uh, that you will experience in your case, but this is a pretty good rendition of the performance gains you can expect. Now, when I ran my preliminary tests at my house, I used a hodgepodge of different fans. This became a problem because some fans were more pressure optimized than others and actually caused one of the fans to stop spinning altogether, losing all the pressurized air that I wanted. So what I needed was all the same fans and I needed to make sure that they were all running at the same speed. So what I did was I went out and got myself this nice little NZXT fan controller, controls up to six fans. So eventually I'm actually going to put the exhaust fan on the motherboard running it at full speed because we're going to have a total of seven fans in our setup. This is going to be our baseline test that we use to compare our turbocharged uh, CPU cooler setup to. This is the standard setup that you will see in a performance optimized computer, a push-pull configuration with the fans. We've started our stress testing. Uh, we've set for 15 minutes and we're going to check our results when we're done. Okay, we're back and we have the results from our stress test. Um, as you can see, uh, our CPU maxed out at 46 degrees and it its current temperature when the stress test was running at 15 minutes was 46 degrees Celsius. So we are going, we have stopped the stress test, we are going to shut the computer off and set up our new apparatus and you guys will finally get to see what this thing is going to look like. I can't believe this, but while cutting the zip ties, I proceeded to cut some of the fan wires for one of the fans, and I know for a fact this experiment won't work without all the fans running, so I now have to try and, and I didn't buy any spare fans, because why would I do that? I can't believe it, I cut the wire and I also fixed it, um, basically by cutting back the sleeve, just twisting the wires together and then covering them with electrical tape. And here's the final product. We have a positive pressure chamber provided to the CPU cooler that allows air to move even faster through it. The theory behind this is we will get lower temps because the air is able to take heat away from the CPU cooler even faster than a traditional setup would. So we're gonna start our benchmarks. We'll be back in a few minutes to check our results. Uh, I'm getting a little nervous because 
we're already up to, we're just a few seconds in, we're already up to 43 degrees Celsius, which means this thing isn't performing quite as well as I hope, but the test isn't over, so let's see what it does after a few more minutes. So the results are in, and we have a performance gain. I'm really excited to tell you guys, our CPU maxed out at 44 degrees Celsius and is running at 43 degrees Celsius. So we have a whopping three degrees Celsius of performance gain. Three degrees for five additional fans in a butt ton of space and more noise. What we found is that the performance gains do not justify the cost. There simply was not enough cooling performance gains to make it worth building this setup and going through the hassle and the cost involved. We'd love it if you like and subscribe and thank you for watching.